and fight No one could save me but you It's strange what this I make foolish people do I never dreamed that I meet somebody like you I never dreamed that I lose somebody like you Hi, this is John Cullen. Welcome to Bedtime Stories. In this episode, I'm going to read Estimating Influenza Disease Burden from Population-Based Surveillance Data in the United States, a paper from the CDC. Abstract. Annual estimates of the influenza disease burden provide information to evaluate programs and allocate resources. We used a multiplier method with routine population-based surveillance data on influenza hospitalization in the United States to correct for underreporting and estimate the burden of influenza for seasons after the 2009 pandemic. Five sites of the Influenza Hospitalization Surveillance Network, FluServe.net, collected data on the frequency and sensitivity of influenza testing during two seasons to estimate under detection population based rates of influenza associated hospitalization and intensive care unit admission from 2010 to 13 were extrapolated to the US population from fluserve.net and corrected for under detection influenza deaths were calculated using a ratio of deaths to hospitalizations we estimated that influenza-related hospitalizations extrapolated estimates for three seasons from 2010 to 13 included 114,192 to 624, 435 hospitalizations, 18,491 to 95,390 ICU admissions, and 4,915 to 27,174 deaths per year. 54 to 70 percent of hospitalizations and 71 to 85 percent of deaths occurred among adults aged 65 and older. Influenza caused a substantial disease burden in the U.S. that varies by age and season. Periodic estimation of multipliers across multiple sites and age groups improves our understanding of influenza detection in sentinel surveillance systems. Adjusting surveillance data using a multiplier method is a relatively simple means to estimate the impact of influenza and the subsequent value of interventions to prevent 2011 by a factor of 2.1 for ages below 18 years, 3.1 for ages 18 to 64 years, and 5.2 for age 65 and older programs and allocate resources. Not every person who truly has influenza will seek medical care, be tested for influenza, have a positive test, and therefore be reported through influenza surveillance. Routinely available influenza diagnostic tests also vary in sensitivity. Thus, data collected through influenza surveillance and case finding represent only a fraction of persons infected with influenza. The underdetection of influenza hospitalizations and deaths has traditionally been accounted for using statistical methods to model excess morbidity and mortality attributable to influenza using data from death certificates and medical encounters such as hospital discharge records. These methods have been widely used over the past few decades in the United States and many other countries, but the data necessary to make estimates are often not available 
for two to three years following an influenza season. To provide more timely influenza disease burden estimates during the spring wave of the 2009 H1N1 pandemic, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention developed a multiplier method to adjust case reports from state and local health departments in the U.S. for factors leading to under-detection of influenza. This method was later expanded to use routine population-based influenza hospitalization surveillance data to make estimates of the number of influenza cases, hospitalizations and deaths, hospitalizations and deaths during the fall and winter pandemic wave as the pandemic unfolded. Following the 2009 pandemic, there was continued interest by CDC in using existing population-based surveillance systems. to provide estimates of the influenza disease burden during influenza seasons. Using multipliers estimated during the heightened awareness of a pandemic, however, may not accurately reflect non-pandemic seasons, since influenza detection may differ during seasonal epidemics. To calculate multipliers that were more relevant to post-pandemic seasons, we collected data on the frequency and sensitivity of influenza testing during two seasons to correct for underreporting in hospital surveillance. We used these data to estimate the disease burden attributable to influenza for three consecutive seasons following the 2009 pandemic. Materials and Methods Materials and Methods we based our method for estimating the U.S. influenza disease burden on annual surveillance data collected through the Influenza Hospitalization Surveillance Network, FluServe.net. This network conducts population-based sentinel surveillance for laboratory-confirmed influenza-associated hospitalizations from October to the following April in 13 geographically diverse surveillance areas across the U.S., covering approximately 9% of the country's population. Surveillance officers identify all laboratory-confirmed influenza hospitalizations that occur among residents of the surveillance areas by monitoring 282 hospitals in 79 counties. Data from all sites are combined to report weekly during the influenza season on the level of influenza-associated hospitalizations by age group in the United States. Detection of Influenza-Associated Hospitalizations A patient is included in FluServe.net if he or she resides in the surveillance area and is admitted to a hospital in the catchment area with laboratory confirmation of influenza virus infection. Laboratory testing for influenza is ordered at the discretion of clinicians providing medical care, and confirmation may include a positive result from viral culture, direct or indirect fluorescent antibody uh, DFA slash IFA, rapid antigen test, RAT, reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction, RT-PCR, or documentation of a positive test result in a patient's medical record. Patients are identified through hospital laboratory and admission databases, infection control logs, and hospital discharge data for patients with a documented positive influenza test. Through medical record review, data are collected for each patient, including demographic characteristics, medical history, and clinical course and outcome for example, admission to intensive care unit, mechanical ventilation, or death. Because influenza testing in FluServe.net areas is performed at the discretion of the healthcare provider, 
A person hospitalized with influenza is only identified if he or she is tested for influenza and if the test correctly detects, detects influenza. Patients with influenza are missed if they are not tested for influenza or if the tests used are not perfectly sensitive. To determine an appropriate multiplier to correct for underdetection of influenza hospitalizations, we collected additional data to estimate A, the probability that a person who was hospitalized with a respiratory infection would have been tested for influenza, and B, the probability that a person who truly had influenza would test positive for influenza, the sensitivity of influenza testing. To correct for underdetection of influenza hospitalizations, we adjusted the reported rate of hospitalization for each age group by the proportion of patients tested for influenza and the average sensitivity of influenza testing. The overall level of underdetection was summarized using a multiplier that represents the expected number of true influenza hospitalizations per reported hospitalization and was calculated as the multiplier is equal to 1 over the frequency of influenza testing multiplied by the sensitivity of influenza testing. So the multiplier is equal to 1 over the frequency of influenza testing times the sensitivity of influenza testing. Data collection was performed in a sample of participating surveillance areas to assess influenza testing practices among hospitalized patients with respiratory infections. Five surveillance areas, California, Colorado, New Mexico, New York, and Oregon, collected data during the periods December to April of the 2010 to 2011 and 2011 to 2012 seasons. The California surveillance area contributed data as two separate sites. California Site 1 included facilities belonging to a large managed care organization that ensures a large proportion of the surveillance population. While California Site 2 included all other facilities in the surveillance area in Northern California. Protocols were reviewed by human subjects specialists at CDC and local sites and determined to be public health surveillance and exempt from further IRB review. Patient information was de-identified prior to analysis. <clears throat> to identify eligible persons hospitalized with a respiratory illness, sites selected hospitals that were representative of their catchment area and identified all patients who had been admitted with respiratory infection using a discharge audit of ICD-9 codes 466 and 480 to 488. To determine the probability that a person hospitalized with a respiratory infection would have been tested for influenza, a stratified random sample of eligible patients per month by age group, less than 18 years, 18 to 64 years, and 65 and older, was selected to review laboratory records and or medical charts and identify whether patients were tested for influenza and, if so, what type of test was used. We analyzed data within age groups, but also examined whether there were other factors associated with influenza testing, including month during the season, disease severity, or residual differences in finer age categories. The sensitivity of influenza testing was calculated as a weighted average based on the distribution of test types performed at each site. A representative sensitivity value was selected for each test type from a review of the literature, with a lower estimate among persons age 65 and older based on studies that suggest lower sensitivity among older adults, 7 to 9, rat, when multiple tests were performed for a single patient, the more sensitive test was used for all calculations. To combine data across sites, simply pooling all observations into binomial estimates of each parameter has limitations. 
Numerous site level factors contribute to variation in estimates from site to site, which can result in an incorrect summary estimate and its confidence interval. The beta binomial method has been shown to appropriately combine heterogeneous studies to estimate summary frequencies. The beta binomial distribution is a binomial distribution in which the probability of success at each trial is not fixed, but random, and follows the beta distribution. For each season, we applied the beta binomial models with maximum likelihood estimation to obtain pooled proportions using the SAS macro beta bin. This macro uses the SAS procedure NL mixed to provide maximum likelihood estimates of the mean and standard deviation from each fitted distribution. Detailed explanation of the statistical assumptions for the beta binomial model and the process of estimating the pooled proportions are described in, in Young Shu et al. Young Shu et al. Independent models were fitted to estimate the pooled proportion of patients tested for influenza and the test sensitivity and were hierarchical by age group. The estimated distributions for each parameter are shown. The age-specific parameter estimates and their associated error were algebraically combined to calculate multipliers and 95% confidence intervals for the 2010-11 and 2011-12 seasons. We also calculated a mult a we also calculated a summary multiplier for each age group following the same methods but using data from both seasons. Calculations <clears throat> Calculations were performed in SAS version 9.3 from Cary, North Carolina. The ratio of deaths to hospitalizations. Data on the occurrence of death among hospitalized patients with influenza are captured in FluServe.net by medical record review and finalized at the end of the season. We use these data to calculate the risk of death among all influenza hospitalizations identified by age group and season. Not all persons who die with influenza are admitted to a hospital prior to their death, and others may die after hospital discharge Thus, hospital surveillance does not fully capture deaths due to influenza in the catchment area. To estimate a more complete ratio of deaths to hospitalizations, we also include data on the probability that a person with a respiratory infection would die outside of a hospital admission. For this, we use publicly available mortality data from the National Center for Health Statistics for the U.S. population in 2010 to identify the deaths attributable to a pneumonia and influenza, ICD-10 codes J10 through J18, and the proportion that occurred while hospitalized versus outside of a hospital admission, for example, at home, on arrival, in the emergency department, in hospice, or long-term care facility. <clears throat> the ratio of deaths to hospitalizations, D2H, represents the expected number of influenza deaths relative to the number of influenza hospitalizations and was calculated algebraically for each group as D to H is equal to the number of reported deaths over the number of reported hospitalizations multiplied by one over the percent of deaths that occur in the hospital. Estimating the Influenza Disease Burden Using an approach previously described in 2009 and outlined in Figure 1, we estimated the annual influenza disease burden by age group younger than 18, 18 to 64, 65 and older using a series of age-specific parameters as described above. The rate of influenza hospitalization the multiplier for underdetection, the probability of influenza testing and the sensitivity of influenza testing, the percent of influenza hospitalizations admitted to the ICU, 
and the ratio of deaths to hospitalizations. First, we adjusted the reported annual hospitalization rates from FluServe Dash Net for three seasons from 2010 to 2013 using multipliers that included the probability of being tested for influenza and the sensitivity of influenza testing. Season-specific data were used for adjustments when available. And for the 2012-2013 season, summary data from the two measured seasons were used. Rates of influenza mortality were calculated by multiplying the adjusted rates of hospitalization by the ratio of deaths to hospitalizations. The rate of intensive care unit admissions was calculated by multiplying the adjusted rate of hospitalization by the percent of hospitalized influenza patients admitted to the ICU per year in FluServe-Net. The series of calculations were done as algebraic combinations of the observed values of each individual parameter, and 95% confidence intervals were calculated by combining the associated uncertainties from all included parameters. Lastly, adjusted rates of influenza-associated hospitalization ICU admissions and death, and their 95% confidence intervals were applied to the annual U.S. population census estimates by age group to estimate the number of influenza-associated hospitalizations for each season. During the 2009 pandemic, we also estimated the number of influenza illnesses in the population using a ratio of cases to hospitalizations based on data about medical care, seeking, and specimen collection submission, and confirmation. For the post-pandemic seasons, we lacked data on non-hospitalized illnesses, but did not and did not estimate this number of influenza illnesses in the population. For the post-pandemic seasons, we lacked data on non-hospitalized illnesses and did not estimate this number of influenza illnesses in the population. Results. Results. Results from December 2010 through April 2011, five month period. Sites reported data from medical records on influenza testing practices for 5,458 patients hospitalized with a respiratory infection. ICD codes 466, 480 through 488. Two sites data included all patients California Site 1, Oregon. Other sites included an age-stratified random sample of 60 charts per month. From December 2011 through April 2012, five-month period, sites reported data from chart review on influenza testing practices for 2,506 patients. One site included data for all patients, California Site 1, other sites included an age-stratified random sample of 60 charts per month. The proportion of patient, patients, the proportion of patients tested for influenza varied considerably by site and season, but generally decreased with age, 30 to 89 percent among children aged eight, uh, younger than 18, 18 to 72 percent among younger adults aged 18 to 64, and lowest at all sites among older adults aged 65 and older, ranging 15 to 50%. Testing did not further vary within age groups, except among the younger adults, with testing being less common among adults closer to age 65. There was some variation in influenza testing by month. The median percent of patients tested for influenza across sites increased from 30% in December to 48% in March during 2010 and 11, and from 32% in December to 42% in April during 2011 and 12, with greater variability among adults than children. In a logistic regression model, controlling for age and site, patients who died were 0.71 times as likely to have been tested for influenza as patients who survived to discharge. 
and that's a 95% confidence interval. The sensitivity of influenza testing also varied between sites. Depending on the mix of test types performed, rapid tests and RT-PCR were the most commonly performed tests overall, though the distribution of test types varied substantially from site to site. There was less variation by age, though in several sites, children were more likely to be tested with rapid tests than adults. There are likely facility-level differences within a surveillance area. For example, the California site, belonging to a major managed care plan, used exclusively RT-PCR testing, while the other facilities in that area used predominantly rapid tests. We combined the frequency and sensitivity of influenza testing from six sites to estimate a multiplier for FluServe.net <clears throat> under detection. We combined the frequency and sensitivity of influenza testing from six sites to estimate a multiplier for FluServe.net under detection of 2 to 5.6 varying by season and age group, with the highest magnitude of correction needed among adults age 65 and older. Multipliers for individual sites ranged from a low of 1.2 among children in one site to a high of 10.8 among older adults in another. For a given group, there was less variability between seasons. <clears throat> and the summary multiplier for each age group was similar when the two seasons were combined. Across all FluServe.net sites, the risk of ICU admission among hospitalized patients with influenza was relatively consistent between years and age groups, varying from 15 to 19 percent. The risk of death during influenza hospitalizations increased with age from 0.2 to 0.9% in children younger than 18 to 1.8 to 2.8% of younger adults 18 to 64 and 3.4 to 4.7% of adults age 65 and older. Deaths among children were least likely to be captured by hospital-based surveillance with 50% of death certificates for children with pneumonia and influenza indicating that death occurred outside of a hospital admission compared with 25% of younger adults and 30% of older adults. Applying our results to the U.S. population by age group for each of the three post-pandemic seasons, we estimated 114,000 to 633,000 total hospitalizations, 18,476 to 96,667 ICU admissions, and 4,866 to 27,810 deaths this season, per season. The three included seasons varied in the timing and intensity of influenza activity, with the highest estimate seen for the 2012-2013 season and the lowest for the 2011-2012 season. Because of the variability in influenza testing during the season, we repeated our estimates with multipliers stratified by month and found little difference in the estimated numbers of hospitalizations ICU admissions, or deaths per season. Older adults age 65 and older accounted for 54 to 70 percent of hospitalizations and 73 to 85 percent of deaths depending on the season and had the highest rates of hospitalization 170 to 1033 per 100,000 persons and death 8.6 to 55 per 100,000. By comparison, children had lower rates of hospitalization and especially death, followed by younger adults. Discussion. From the 2010-2011 through 2012-2013 seasons, we estimated that approximately 115,000 to 630,000 influenza-associated hospitalizations 18,000 to 96,000 ICU admissions, and 5,000 to 27,000 deaths occurred in the U.S. depending on the season. These estimates are similar to previously published national estimates of 86,494 
to 544,909 hospitalizations per year from the years 1979 to 2001, and 3,349 to 48,614 deaths per year from 1976 to 2007, using models of excess influenza-associated morbidity and mortality. After accounting for the underdetection of influenza, our estimates represented 2 to 5.6 times the level of influenza morbidity as reported by hospitalization surveillance. Underdetection of influenza varied substantially with the patient's age, highest among older adults who are least likely to be tested for influenza during hospitalization. The degree... <clears throat> The degree of underdetection, the degree of underdetection also varied by site, up to 10 times the level of reported hospitalization in some sites for older adults, but was relatively stable between the 2010 and 11 and 2011 and 2012 seasons. There are practical limitations to influenza surveillance that often lead to detected cases being the tip of the iceberg. For comparison, we previously estimated a multiplier during the 2009 pandemic of 2.7 times, range 1.7 to 4.5, the number of influenza hospitalizations reported to CDC, though we did not have sufficient data to stratify by age group. Previous studies found a similar degree of underdetection among children during two seasons prior to the 2009 pandemic estimating that clinical laboratory-based influenza detection captured 38 and 39 percent of pediatric influenza hospitalizations in one surveillance area. These estimates are both similar to our post-pandemic estimate among children, though data are lacking on comparable estimates of the sensitivity of influenza surveillance among adults. While the under-recognized burden of influenza has been better documented among children, we found that adults especially older adults with influenza, were even less likely to be identified through surveillance. I'm John Cullen. Thanks for joining Bedtime Stories. The world was on fire, no one could save me but you. Strange what this I make foolish people do I never dreamed that I meet somebody like you I never dreamed that I lose somebody like you Oh
was on fire and no one could save me but you It's strange what this I make foolish people do I never dreamed that I love somebody like you I never dreamed that I love somebody like you No, I don't want to fall in love No, I don't want to fall in love Without you Without you oh.